guys, look what the cat dragged in. This is an old Hewlett Packard oscilloscope, dual trace. Looking for a model number, it's a model 140A. This would be a vacuum tube scope. Needs a little bit of cleaning up on here. It's seen better days. This was given to me by an old friend that uh, I used to actually work for this fellow, you know, 30 odd years ago. And when he sold his shop, the new owner of the shop didn't want the old gear, so he took it. And it's been sitting stored for the last gosh knows how many years, but it's this thing's very, very old. And I thought, I don't really need a, an ancient scope like this for anything, but I got to thinking. I do have an XY oscilloclock circuit. You see it on my opening video, displaying the time on my more modern scope. And I thought, what a perfect use for this old beast, even though the thing makes enough noise to wake the dead. You can hear the fan going in the back of this thing. This thing really makes a lot of noise, but I thought, what a what a great use for this. Display the time on a scope. The only problem is this unit is a dual channel scope, but it doesn't have an XY input. It's a just a dual channel scope. This scope at one time did have an external horizontal input, but as you can see, someone's taken the BNC connector off. And that external input. I would imagine, I don't know whether you could, uh, maybe you could, I don't know whether in external, whether there was actually any gain or not. But what we're going to do is we're going to pop this thing apart. And I'm going to see whether I can reconnect that external input and make this thing display the time from my XY clock circuit. And if not, perhaps I can modify it and use the second channel and rewire it so that that will give me an XY display. Anyway, that's the hope of this video. As you can see, these units were very well built and they were designed for servicing in mind. You just undo this lock screw here and these modules unplug, revealing all the tubes that this thing's got in it. Now on inspection, this is the horizontal sweep circuit and horizontal sweep switch. This is the trigger source switch here. We've got position controls here and if we turn this thing over, I noticed that there just happens to be a wire that's been cut. And I'm going to guess that that wire originally went to the horizontal input, the external horizontal input. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just disconnect the wire here from the external trigger and we'll move the horizontal input wire up to here. I'm not even going to bother to physically move the jack. That's too much work. This one's already screwed in to the circuit. I guess I could undo it, but um, I'm just thinking I'm just going to change the wire over for now and see whether this unit will actually work. If it will function like that, then maybe I will just for cosmetic reasons move the plug down there. But then again, if I'm going to use this thing for a clock display, I may be further ahead just to put my clock circuit and actually mount the little circuit board inside the case and put some time setting switches on the front panel for setting the time. But let's see if we can get this thing working first. I think this would be a perfect little project and if nothing else it would be one hell of a conversation piece for my bench here as a time display and then maybe work on getting a little quieter fan for that uh, power supply that cooling fan because this thing just as you can hear makes one quite quite a racket I'm just waiting for my uh, all iron to warm up and then we'll transfer this wire over and see whether we're able to make this thing work easily if not I'll be getting into some of the other uh, circuitry to see if I can rewire the second channel amplifier to uh, the horizontal circuit so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to unsolder the existing wire that is on the external input. We'll get that one out of the way. And then I gotta get the other wire from the bottom up top here so that I can connect it to this connector. 
Now once again, this is the piece of cake because these units here all use point-to-point -point wiring, so it's just a matter of relocating that wire. To the top and and connect to our input connector. And we just had a power surge. I don't know if caught that or not, but the lights just flickered here and and the lights just flickered again. We just had another power surge. Won't affect the camera because it's battery powered, but we still had a surge. Okay, I get my scope probe here. We'll see whether this thing's going to have any horizontal input on it. And that would be really nice if I didn't have to do any more work other than to reconnect the external trigger input as a horizontal input. We'll turn the, turn the scope back on here. So there we have our normal scan. If I turn it down to external. And it does look like we do have some, some gain, whether we're gonna have enough. Whether we're gonna have enough gain on this thing. Oh yeah, magnifier, that might work. And we just had another power surge. Looks like we may have enough input. I'm going to go grab that clock module and we'll hook that clock module up and see whether it works. So here we have our little oscilloscope uh, clock module. We'll reconnect it up here and see whether we get anything. Holy smoke, look at that, it works. Wow, actually it works really quite well. It's almost filling the full screen. I don't have this thing in, um, in uh, magnify mode either, so I wonder if I magnify this thing, and then we can adjust the gain here. Where did it go? Oh, there it is, there, cool. Not bad, not bad at all. We can adjust the gain on this one too. I think that that uh, is a success. What do you think? And it's, it's out by an hour because uh, we're on daylight time and this thing was set a long time ago, but it's got the right day. Uh, I would have to say that uh, this is a 100% absolute success. Or if I can get a little more brightness out of that uh, CRT, but uh, it certainly is nice and sharp. And uh, there's no problem at all reading that. We'll take a look, we'll turn out some lights here. We'll take a look at this thing in a darker room. I would definitely have to say that that's the best conversation piece I've seen in a long time. I'm really happy with uh, how this looks. I think probably I have to clean some of these controls a bit because this thing hasn't been adjusted in so long that some of the controls are just a little bit, a little bit dirty. Oh, that was me bumping the power. But uh, all in all, I'd say that this is a success. I'm happy I didn't throw this thing in the garbage. I was. Uh, contemplating just taking this thing to the recycling center, but I couldn't do it just because it's old tech. It's old school tech, it's full of tubes. I love stuff that's full of tubes. 
and I've given this old scope a new lease on life. Now I'm going to, I think what I'll do is I'll take this module, maybe, maybe not, but I can take the module and build the module inside the case itself and have it powered up so whenever the scope is turned on, because this thing here retains, it has a memory, so if I unplug the power and I plug it back in, it'll retain the time. So basically all I need to do is have a way to set the time and uh, there's a couple buttons here for setting the time. If I put, put a couple of uh, momentary contact uh, switches on here for setting the time, I'll, I'll be able to put this right inside the actual case and turn this old Hewlett Packard 140A oscilloscope into the coolest digital clock you've ever seen. There are different modes too for this module. I can switch it here. Um, I forget how to do this here. Oh, the, oh by the way, the, the, the um, The software, this is the Dutchtronics uh, software. It's open source. It's open source program, so anybody can go and buy it, or anybody can can uh, can build it. Dial 24 hours GPS. Uh, it even take GPS. App clock. can even have a digital clock like that instead of having the time display you can have it display as a digital clock very cool I think I'm gonna get just for the fun of it we can go through some of the menus and see what this thing can do so I can change the whoops I can change the dial Roman numerals dial digital right I can change dial binary dial minutes so it only shows 3, 6, 9 and 12 dial back to 12 hour and I don't know what this one does dial 24 hours because it looks exactly the same as dial 12 hours and then back to Roman numeral or digital do you see the difference between that and that? We're going to set the clock on this thing too here. It's going to remember how to do that. Uh, Got to get into clock setting mode. It's there we go. Press S one long and change it to a five. There we go. Five fifty. That's close enough. Oops. I I didn't do it right. Five fifty eight. It says press S one to start. So now. We've got the time set. So if I press S1 and I change dial to 24 hours, um, still don't know what it does. It doesn't seem to do anything different. Digital, well, we know what that does. I can also have this replaced by the date down here too if I if I switch this date now I can have the date 25th July 2015 so I can choose time or date and I can go back here and uh, put the, it has an alarm on it too so I can have 12 hour 24 hour hexadecimal or the date and I can pick so I don't know whether that oh there we go that's what 24 does if you've got the date display down here instead of the time then it displays the hours and this will change 1 to 12 13 to 24 depending on the time 
So now you can look at it as 17.59 in seconds. So that's that's what that does. Oops. And we can put it in Roman numerals. Digital clock. Binary clock. Minutes. Or back to 12 hour, which displays the time. And then you have the choice of having the day and the date and the time on the analog dial. Again, I can adjust the, the, the size here, and I'm going to clean those controls. I'm going to need to clean those controls. I can adjust the size right up so that it just fits the screen. The thing with this unit is it it moves the it moves the timer around in an, in an effort to prevent burn in on the tube it moves I guess that's the limit of my deflection there it moves the uh, the timer around now I can I think I can turn that off if I'm not mistaken here I press and hold nope oh, wrong button What's it say here? It's this one. Here we go. Burn. If I turn the burn I can turn the burn in off and now it won't uh, move this thing around on the screen but obviously the whole point in it moving around the screen a little bit every few minutes is to um, prevent burn-in from the scope tube itself but if I was going to use this just as a dedicated clock which I think I probably will because I again I don't have much use for the scope other than for displaying the time on so I think I'll probably leave the burn-in um, feature turned off just because I'm really not concerned about the numbers burning into the uh, the tube, if you know what I mean. If it was a nice expensive uh, good scope that I was using for other stuff then I'd be a little more concerned about that but in this case I'm not really that concerned whether it burns or not. So anyway now I am done with this video. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next, 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 next one. Catch you in the next one. Bye.